Hello Megor and welcome to another PLA versus PTG battle and I like uh, this kind of comparison videos because uh, from the same brand from King Rune we can compare the, these two materials and easily understand the difference between them. The PLA will be in red color and the PTG is in black color. Additionally I got two more products from the King Rune and uh, this is the vacuum pump and uh, some vacuum bags because the PTG is sensitive to moisture. Of course, not like nylon, but anyway, I always like to store them after the printing in some resealable or if possible vacuum bags because it will be protected from the moisture in the air. Of course, the main part will be testing the filaments, but uh, I will test these bags too and see, I don't know, this power consumption of this vacuum pump and uh, maybe five or ten bags I will use and to see how they hold the vacuum inside. Nice second packaging and I'm starting with PLA and everything will be printed on King Room KP3SC the printer. There is a sticker with the recommended printing temperature and the temperature tower will be from 220 down to 200 degrees Celsius. And I think the holes for the locking end of the filament could be a little bit bigger distance. Since there is no information what is the weight of the empty spool, I measure it, it should be 178 grams. Interesting thing I noticed, we have two different informations on two sides of the spool. So here the max temperature is 220 degrees Celsius and 60 on the bed. But on the other side it has 210 on the nozzle and uh, 60 and 80 on the bed. So far super clean and nice printing on any element. And it starts the last one on 200 degrees Celsius. Well, it's perfect on any element, but I will print everything on 210 degrees Celsius. And the last two elements for the layer adhesion test. And it's time to move to the PETG. Ah, it doesn't have the sticker from the other side. And the temperature tower will be only from the 240 down to 230. I'm not going up to 250 because this is the Teflon line hot end. It's printing the second element and I can see absolutely no stringing. This means it is completely dry out of the box. And this temperature tower is perfect, not even one string, this means the filament is completely dry off to the box. And now you print everything on 240 degrees Celsius, which is actually in the middle of the recommended printing temperature range. First layer looks good, 240 on the nozzle, 80 degrees on the bed and only 50% cooling. And finishing the last two elements for the layer adhesion test. Printing is finished and all test objects are ready for the testing. Just two quick examples for the practical printing from PETG. These are holders for the flower pot because uh, they are deformed under the mass of the sand. And uh, with this they will hold their shape. And this is the strain relief for the cable on the hotbed because this cannot stay like so. And here is my solution. Only now I notice from this hose that these spools are not equal and I forget to measure this one. And it's time for the mechanical testing. This test object is printed in horizontal position. The smallest cross section area is 4 by 4 mm. And I'm starting with PLA. Unfortunately, one footage is missing here. And this is now PETG. For the filling, they were very similar. Unfortunately, one footage is missing. I pressed the button, but it didn't start recording. But I was watching it, the brake was approximately at 85 kg. And now the layer adhesion test with the vertically printed test objects. And I'm starting with PLA. The smallest cross section area is also 4 by 4 mm. And then moving to the PETG. Stronger. 
Well, this was strong. Even I could see some micro gaps between the layers on PETG, but uh, quite strong layer adhesion. Two-sided shell stress at the diameter of this test object is 5 mm. Here you can see them side by side. The break was very similar, correct on those two cross-section areas, and the difference is approximately 10%. And now torque or twist test, this side goes into the vise and this one goes into the torque meter. And I want to measure the load at 90 degree angle and the maximum load. I'm starting with the PLA. One newton meter on 90 degree rotation. And this is now PETG and also one newton meter on 90 degree rotation. Here I can do more twists and bigger maximum load, but I think that the load at 90 degree rotation is uh, more important in this case. Three point bending test and here you can see my test setup. And uh, these loads will be placed uh, one by one and I will measure the deformation after 130 and 60 seconds. And here you can see them side by side and this part is split up uh, 20 times. This is the deformation under 5 kg load and under 10 kg. Into sync there is no noticeable permanent deformation on them. With ISO impact tester and this half kilogram hammer, I can see which of these two materials are more brittle. Well, in theory, the PLA is more brittle compared to the PETG, but uh, let's measure it. PLA, zero position. PETG. For the first look, very similar materials and both are very brittle, uh, but let's check the numbers. This is a zero position of the hammer. This is after breaking the PLA. And this is after breaking the PETG. And yes, the PLA is more brittle material, but the difference is very minimal. And now the oven temperature test with the M10 nut as a small load. And now we follow the temperature with this cooking thermometer. And this is the time lapse. And uh, as expected, the PLA started with deformation at approximately 55 degrees Celsius and the PETG on 67 degrees Celsius. And on 100 degrees Celsius, I stopped the experiment and then I check their hardness and they were soft very similarly and after only two minutes they became hard and now my regular creep test to measure the deformation under the constant load this will be 1.55 kilograms and I'm fixing the position so the measuring is more precise 1463 and bigger start deformation on PETG 1547 and after one day the deformation is very similar I already measured them after two days the deformation is still very similar but a little bit bigger on the PLA on day three it is quite obvious that PLA has a one millimeter bigger deformation than PETG after six days and now removing of the load and after half hours we can see some permanent deformation and it is much bigger on the PLA and now let's analyze the results in this Excel table. Here you can see my print settings. And let's start with the creep test. And uh, interesting because uh, the PLA had a smaller deformation on the day zero. And after day six, it has more deformation than PETG, the deformation I measure on these two reference surfaces. But we need is the difference between two days. And that's what we can see in this table. And this is presented on this graph. And uh, it can be seen that the PLA basically uh, reduced with the creeping only on the fifth day and the PETG, well, on the day three, it has very minimal creeping from that point. Tensile test, well, I measure here only the brake load and uh, it was very similar. So the brakes around 87, 86 kilograms in both cases. Now, biggest difference we can see in the layer adhesion test. Uh, so everything above 20 kilograms is acceptable, uh, but the PETG almost 50 kilograms uh, brake load. This was very impressive. The shear stress. Uh, well, the difference here is very minimal. So a little bit stronger is the PLA. And now that three point bending test. So in this table, we can see the deformations after 30 seconds on these loads. But I believe that this table is much more important because uh, here we can see the deformations after 130 
at 60 seconds on this given load. And uh, well, yes, uh, here also the PLA performed better, but uh, I can see some creeping, for example, on 10 kilograms. So this is more flat curve compared to this one. The torque or twist test, and uh, I believe that uh, this is more important value, so the load at 90 degree angle, and in this case they were similar. Of course, with the PETG we could do uh, more turns and a bigger brake load, but uh, basically this is what is important in this kind of test. The ISO impact test, and yes, uh, PLA is more brittle material, but the difference is uh, very minimal. The temperature test, important experiment because uh, this may be one of the main reasons why would you like to go with the PETG instead of PLA. As you can see, uh, temperature difference. Uh, this means that, for example, if you forget your PLA in a car on hot summer day, it may deform, but PETG may survive. And the price, uh, this is the price for 2 kilogram packs and uh, the price is equal in both cases. And now let's see this storage system. Oh, mm -hmm. so I have here 20 bags and I have some uh, desiccants inside because they will be placed inside and there are some clips directly I need only one this is for the helping to seal correctly this line and I noticed this is double sealing line and this secures better that vacuum inside now let's see this vacuum pump mm, there is some user manual with the specifications 400 milliampere hours is the battery power it uh, works on 5 volts and the vacuum speed is 3 liters per minute. Cable for the charging, it goes here. I will try to illustrate you the strength of the pump. Oh. Pay attention that it must align correctly on this double ceiling line. And then I can even remove it. And the bag is ready in approximately 45 seconds. I prepared here five bags and uh, I'm recording this before all those mechanical testings because in my experience uh, I know that if they will hold uh, five or seven days they will hold several months too. And now after one week um, after all mechanical testings uh, I can see that uh, the vacuum is still in the bags. Now I have to mention that after first hour I noticed one of the bags uh, leaked and then I retied this uh, ceiling line and since that everything is okay so it was a human error. So 5 out of the 5 is working correctly. Another conclusion, well I really like this vacuum storage system especially the double ceiling line on the bags. About these materials, well you saw the results. The main reason you would like to use the PTG instead of the PLA is the higher temperature resistance. Another reason is that creeping. So if you want to use it for some mechanical parts uh, which will be under constant load, so definitely a PETG will deform less during the time under that constant load. Theoretically another reason would be uh, PLA is more brittle material, but in this case the difference was very minimal. Of course, uh, the ABS would be even better compared to the PETG, but that's much harder for the printing. The results you can download from my website, and as always for my Patreon supporters, I'm adding these two lines to that summary table so they can easily compare these results to those which I did in earlier videos. And another spoiler information, King Ray asked me for the review of their Clipper version KP3S, and uh, I hope that video will come soon in the near future. I hope you will follow me there. If you have some other information or maybe give me some reason why do you use the PTG over the PLA, few lines in the comment section. Thank you for watching and happy printing.